and we, you don't have to answer this, uh, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about it. When they stuck that uh, golf tee into your lung 15 minutes before the game, uh, did you? Oh, yeah, keep a straight face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you think? Yeah, okay. Did you think about getting loud? Because you handled that very professionally. And I think a lot of people around the NFL, quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks around the NFL, are like, how did this happen? How does this happen? You've just always seemed to handle things like incredibly like team oriented, team first. Have you always been that way? Because that could have become a big fucking deal, obviously. We were all very surprised by that whole thing. Yeah, um, I've just always been taught to, to handle things with class. I mean, obviously, um, it was a, I guess you could say, an accident to happen. Um, definitely unexpected, but it was nothing that I could do. It, it, nothing that I could do at that point. Um, my main focus was getting back healthy, um, and it was it was a lot for the return to play. Uh, when it comes to that situation, I couldn't travel for a good amount of time. Um, but like I said, my focus had just shifted, um, and it didn't want to. B, I guess just the, the odd person in the locker room, a person bringing negativity. I uh, just wanted to stay positive through it all and looking forward to for a situation that I had here, opportunity that I have here. It seems like you're the perfect guy to end up in Houston, by the way, yeah. with everything that's going on. And, and I know probably outside the building, everybody's thinking like, hey, this place is, seems like it's burning down from within. And then you show up and it's like, hey, I've been through some shit. Coach Dave, you had no idea what you were getting into when you got here. Coach uh, Nick Casario, how's it going? Let's kind of do this thing. That it has been beautiful to watch at least that first game against Jacksonville. I guess you're going to have to continue to build on that. Let's take it easy on the Colts, though, Tyrod. When are you going to play the Indianapolis Colts? Let's go ahead and take the foot off the throttle a little bit. Let's go ahead and coast home. Let's go ahead and lose those games, Tyrod. One week at a time. I absolutely love it. Uh, a couple of the boys have some questions. Tyrod, I hope you're okay with that. Go ahead, Ty. Tyrod, going off what Pat just said, you're obviously uh, you're a pretty soft-spoken guy. I, I don't know. like We don't really hear any like major you know, sound bites from you or anything like that. But when you get to Houston and J.J. Watt's gone, like, did you kind of notice that there was just like a leadership vacuum there that, that you were going to need to – to fill and obviously you know outside of being a quarterback you're a vet you've been there a long time like was that something you felt like you needed to do right when you got there absolutely i want to say we signed 33 free agents this past uh off season <laughs> whatever whenever you get a situation like that you definitely have a um a vacated uh spot for, for leadership you guys have to step up obviously lead in their own ways and um i mean with the quarterback position that comes with it and uh, i mean I, I welcome that role i mean when i go back and think about the teams or the organizations I've been with before. Um, obviously, the Buffalo situation was definitely an opportunity where I had to lead and be more vocal, but i also even say just the Cleveland uh, year that I spent there, because the locker room was so was so young, um, regardless of what had happened to me, I still had to find ways to lead because um, kind of molding and shaping those guys obviously to be the best for their team, but also having an impact on them for the rest of their careers as well too. So, Every- I mean, when you walk into a situation like this, year 11, Naturally, people gravitate to the people with the experience, and they they look for they look forward to you sharing your knowledge with them and leading. I I, saw, I apologize for interrupting an incredible line right there, but everybody that has ever played in the locker room with you loves you, and that for me that is like a massive. That's hey, if I want to hear somebody's opinion, okay, I'd like to hear what their teammates thought of them first, and then if they're liked in there, okay, I'd like to hear. You know, like for me, I think as somebody who's been in the locker room, that is one of the things I look for. Like first. I have not heard a single human ever say anything bad about Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod. Oh, there's an entire – I just got literally texted from Zito and said, hey, you're pronouncing his name wrong, I think. We didn't, we didn't want to be disrespectful, but no, no, no. that was a whole scene. My, on mom, my mom had to clear it up this past weekend. She was out here for the game. She said, look, stop. There's enough with the Tyrod. Tyrod, we're going with Tyrod. Tyrod, <laughs> uh, Tyrod we have one more question. We appreciate you. 